John chapter 19, verses 31 to 42. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want bodies left out on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and, as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. In today's reading, we read about the moments that follow the death of our Lord. Jesus died on a Friday, which was the preparation day for the Sabbath, the day of rest, which happens for Jews on a Saturday. And normally the Romans would have left the bodies on the cross uh, until they had died. But because of Mosaic law, the officials didn't want to leave the bodies overnight. To hasten the death of the, on the cross, the Romans went to break the legs of the people. But coming to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. This fulfilled the many prophecies in the Old Testament regarding the nature of his death, like that no bones would be broken. The disciples then fled the scene and mourned and wept. They would have spent the Saturday confused, upset, angry, let down by their friend that they had journeyed with who they thought were gonna save them, but now has died. Are there times when we can feel let down and confused and angry when we don't understand something that's gone on? What is God speaking to us about what it means to be present and to sit in those feelings on Easter Saturday? On this day, we need to sit like the disciples with the reality of what scholars now call the now and the not yet. Jesus has died redeeming the world the day before and he will rise the day after. But today we are between the two. We need to learn how to sit in the pain of what has happened. But we also need to wait in anticipation of the hope of Easter Sunday. This is the reality of what life can look like sometimes. We live in between the resurrection and the second coming of our Lord. This is a time when we should learn how to wait, but to stand in the firm in the promises of the second coming of our King, like the disciples back between the death and the coming resurrection of Jesus. What do you feel about the phrase, the now and the not yet? What does it look like to live in hope in the now and the not yet kingdom? And why don't we pause for a minute to sit in the unknown of Easter Saturday? Help me, dear Lord, 
to enter into the sorrow and the silence of this holy Saturday. Today, the world waits in mourning in anticipation of the glory of new life. As I sit today in the waiting for the celebration of your resurrection, fill me with hope. This next song is an instrumental so use this time to continue in your prayer and reflection as we glorify his holy name. 